You've watched me grow, change, and evolve. You've been there by my side. This makes you family. Okay, I'll try to actually keep it serious this time, since the whole point is to show what this channel is about. The rule of talking about the channel and not the person should work on both sides of the argument. So why do I like Mullet Mike and Creepy Gaming as much as I do compared to other creepypasta channels aside from us being friends? Well, for starters, while the channel tackles creepypastas from both gaming and traditional media, the channel goes a bit further than that. For example, did you know that games themselves can have a lot of creepy elements throughout? From something more obvious like Resident Evil, to something more unexpected like the Splatoon series, packing a lot of messed up lore. I'm not counting Pokemon because that's kind of a given by this point, but yeah, he will also go to show the creepy elements within the games themselves without any community add-on, though that can still be shown sometimes. If I could give one proper difference that he has over other creepypasta channels, at least from the ones that I have seen, was the organic feel of it all. Like, even if there is a script to work around, it was his script with only himself checking himself up. It was his charm, his style, his methods. It gave the videos a charm that you wouldn't be able to find in your average creepy channel since everyone's about being overly serious or even add more to the story for the sake of making it scary. Now that doesn't sound like a bad thing, mind you, but when it comes to a video about a creepypasta, the story itself should be enough to debate if it's actually scary or not. You can have visuals in order to appeal the elements of a video, but adding jump scares when the story didn't have them is not the proper way to give the story justice, if you ask me. Something that Mullet Mike understood and even played around with it for his videos. If the story isn't scary on its own, then it's not scary. It's fair to have that critical mindset when reading a creepypasta. And because of that, he will also play around with the story with commentary throughout, which gives more to the organic feel since it's his own thoughts for the story. Him doing jokes shows his own feelings, making what's supposed to be creepy also funny to watch and enjoy without actually feeling intrigued or terrified if the narrative already failed of doing that. He also was planning on starting other elements of creepy online history like reddit stories, but that was during the time where Mike was making the decision to give comedic to the world of YouTube. And I gotta admit, it was quite something when he made the decision to stop the committed seasonal format. There were people that wanted this stuff to continue, especially after the sticky events that happened beforehand. And I mean, I don't know, but if the fans were down for it, and Mike was down for it, I'm just saying that I worked on the editing for his last two episodes and I've been a fan of his work for so long to the point of learning it, so maybe if he and the community were down for it then give the chance for the channel to be managed differently, I wouldn't say no. Was that subtle enough? Regardless, if you're into creepy stuff but want to have a fun and entertaining time one way or another, then Mullet Mike has 8 seasons of solid content that will show you the journey of creepy gaming history. See you later. Thanks for listening. Peace. I've been fortunate enough to call many of you friends. I would shout out some names, but I don't want to forget to mention any of you. Thank you all for watching and supporting over the years. Hearing your kind words has meant more to me than you really know. Some of you have mentioned how I may have inspired you or helped out during a rough time. These are the ultimate compliments. Thank you all so much.